The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello and welcome everyone to our uh, second webinar for Danfoss Heating Products. Uh, at the beginning, I would like to thank you all for uh, joining our webinar. Uh, my name is Mina Gabriel, a Project Sales Manager for Danfoss Heating Products, UE. Uh, in today's webinar, we will be talking about the required for the artificial pressure control valves. And in addition, we will be talking about the valve application and usages. Uh, the presentation will be 45 minutes duration. And during the presentation, you may write all your questions in the chat box. At the, at the end of the presentation, we will leave 15 minutes uh, to answer all the questions. And now we may begin with the technical presentation with our technical manager, Mr. Anis. Mr. Anis, you can go ahead, please. Okay, thank you, Mina. Hello again, everyone. So today we'll be speaking uh, differently about uh, the PCVs because uh, most of us should know or might know about the PCVs by now. So what what we will be touching in this subject is uh, the, the, the requirement of the PCV first, where it can be used still because there is PICV solutions so the DPCV is a little bit older, but it is still useful. So what we are proposing here is to use them in shopping malls where the system are built and waiting for the tenant to, to, uh, to use the shop. Usually when it is a shopping mall, they will, not, they will only stop with the shield water up to the entrance of the shop. And the tenant, when he would come, he will do his own mechanical electrical works. So they will find only a provision. Same applies also for offices, where there will be only the infrastructure structure of the office, and then the renter will come and uh, put all his equipment in the in the in the office. Once it is done, they can remove them and so on. So the challenge here is in a big shopping mall where there is like 70% of the areas is uh, sh shops and uh, will be used for the tenants and 30% is the common area. So the heaviest load will be from the tenant side. And while designing the project, you might consider a certain load, but the usage might change. And you don't know what the tenant will be using after he will be occupying the the area so for that specifically you might have also some zones which can get uh, sufficient flow due to overflow in other area you might have some a lot of complaints because we've seen this in uh, in in uh, retrofit jobs where whoever is closer to the pump will be okay the far away you go it's not and so on so the building owner should respond to this complaint because contractually with the tenant you need to provide a certain shield water temperature and flow to that shop. So the, 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 the requirement specifically is to maintain a minimum differential pressure, which means having the flow to that tenant without affecting the overall system balance. Also, the flexibility into doing that, which means today you might fix a value before the tenant is connecting. Once the tenant is connected, you might fix the right value, which is required for the tenant to have his flow. And we will see one example of a calculation we have done. So if, if we need to solve this, we will have to use a differential pressure controller. Why? Because you might say you can use an automatic balancing valve, or they call it auto flow valve or a PICV, but these valves are working on maintaining the flow on a single line, which means 
it will maintain the flow but not the differential pressure so if you take one branch if the tenant will be installing normal two-way valves and you are putting a PICV on the return or an auto flow limiter on the return the total flow will be limited but how this flow is distributed between the unit inside you don't you will not know the PCV will let's say fix a certain differential pressure value that will be applied to the whole shop so either the tenant will be using two-way or PICV it is protected on the owner building owner side which means regardless of what the tenant is using he will never see more than the set value that you are putting on the dpcv so in our case we have we are talking about two main models here afp vfg2 and avp avp is for the n15 until the n50 and then afp vfg2 is for the n65 up to 250. this is to cover the whole range why i'm on showing you we have a lot of downforce dpcv models to mention asv abpm virtus we have a different models but i'm showing these specifically for the application in the middle east region because as you can see you can have nominal pressure of up to 25 bar the maximum differential pressure that this valve can take it can go up to 16 bar which means if your pump head is 16 bar this valve can still control differential pressure also the connection threaded as usual and flanged for 65 and bigger another another example that this dpcv is 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 useful or functional let's say you have a small shop and or let's or even bigger it's okay i mean both case but the tenant decided to use only one single unit he can just pull the impulse tube from the supply line put it after a two-way valve he will get a picv which means the same dpcv if used on a single unit air handling unit fcus on a small area it can be changed into picv only by changing the impulse tube location from the supply line to the after the control valve this will ensure a staged commissioning which means ensure the differential pressure then after the installation of terminal units you can hand over even to the tenant we see an example here this is a normal installation of dpcvs and this is a handed over installation of DPC dpcvs which means as you can see in the first example we have multiple units then you keep the function of dpcvs on another tenant area you have only one single unit then you change the setup into a picv this is also you can modify by only changing the impulse tube this is what it will look like on a normal shopping mall without the users of the dpcv then installing the dpcv you will be able to uh, select which one to be used as what in our case here which is the application of most of the shopping centers uh, we have used this dpcv before you just fix you put uh, dpcv on the return line and then you put the drv on the supply but in case of using dpcv actually drv is not really required what is really required is the exact pressure drop and the exact pressure drop you will be able to know once you have an idea about the tenant equipment inside and the usage etc so as you can see here once the tenant will come with the equipment you will be able to decide the functionality of each part of your installation and the optimum is to find exact pressure drops inside the tenant shop and set the dpcv to that value and not to limit the dpcv to one uh, bar like most of the designs so the dpcv can be used for new installation or for retrofit and also it's somehow a cheaper solution for retrofit in case you are aiming to solve 
the balancing issue in a big network. If we take this example, if you have big networks and you, are, you have an underflow there, overflow there, the PCV is an easy solution to, uh, to include in a network without affecting a lot the operation or the comfort level of the people. Because it's not really every building. In this case, you can put every building one DPCV, and this will make the pressure drop to be evenly, equally distributed throughout the whole network at both full load or part load condition. This is only to compensate for the excess of the differential pressure due to reasons like if someone, for instance, is setting the room thermostat at the low temperature, so the flow demand will be there regardless of either the load is achieved or not. And in that case, you will have overflow. But in case of that overflow to that exact location, the two locations just before it, closer to the pump, will have more overflows, and this will lead to unbalanced system. Then the DPCV will limit that overflow to an exact uh, value. So if we take an example and try to see, try to see here what is happening, while there is no DPCV in the red, the area in red is the pressure drop on the control, on the on, on any moving part in the installation, when a part is moving, the pressure drop will be higher than any other fixed part. So as you can see here, in white is the pressure drop on the DRV, blue is the pressure drop on the tube, and then orange is the pressure drop on the heat exchanger. Those are a static parts and the pressure drop is fixed. And then on the moving part, which is a control valve, is whatever remaining and it will be all this red part. So now if we include the DPCV in the middle, all that excess of pressure drop will be taken care by the differential pressure controller and if you see here at this area, every single element in the circuit is having nearly the same equal pressure drop. So as you can see here, putting a DPCV will balance the overall system pressure. And when this part is resisting to the pressure, then the pressure will move to another part in the network. It finds another DPCV, again, it's the same, and then it will control the pump to a lower speed. This is another way how it is operating. Here we are putting an example, putting a DPCV on a motorized control valve, actuator of differential pressure over motorized control valve. Here's the differential pressure controller. These are the chamber upper and lower diaphragm in the middle, cone and spring, and then the differential pressure across the DPCV. As you can see, high pressure in front of the control uh, of the control valve will be controlled by the DPCV, and the balance will be done by the force of the spring and the water pressure before the DPCV. This is similarly to operation of a PICV. Here, only the sensing point is different. It's not after a control valve; it's on the supply side, which means DPCV is normally open valve and will close on rising differential pressure. It's a normally open, normal two-way valve. Here, when we say actuator, if you can see the word actuator here, it is referring to this pressure chamber. In, in a mechanical, it's a mechanical actuator or they call it also self-acting controller or also they call it a pressure-based actuator. This actuator will work based on the pressure when the pressure difference will be increasing, this will be pushed down to close.
Here a small video of the DPCV operation, how it is opening and closing versus the system differential pressure. And the spring is the counterbalance and the travel of this stem will limit the minimum differential pressure required by the system because the minimum differential pressure required by a system is uh, what you should set on the on the DPCV and not in In one of the presentation we were showing, we were showing a, a two-way valve authority calculation without the DPCV. And it was showing that we need to achieve 0 0.5. And to achieve the 0 0.5, we needed the valve to be selected at 70 kPa. Why? Because the system is having 140 total kPa. But in our case, if I am putting a DPCV here and reduce this available system pressure from 70 till 30 kPa, then the authority will be even higher than, than 0 0.5 plus. Here we said that we are selecting the valve and we will be having a KV of 29.7, which should, which we should use the 40 KV, and then the pressure drop across the valve will be showing 0 0.4. And then 0 0.4, if we recalculate the authority, will become 28%. This is without DPCV. Now, if I take 40 kPa, with the DPCV, which I will be setting at, let's say 10 kPa, then I will be have 40 divided by 80, and I can bring back the valve authority to 0 0.5. Let me re-explain this again, because it's a bit complicated. So if I go back to this slide, forget about, the DPCV here, and we need to find what should be the pressure drop across this two-way valve in order to achieve an authority of 0 0.5. Okay, so the, the differential pressure across a valve divided by delta P, open valve plus delta P system, is the formula of the authority. And we need to have a 0.5 authority on a normal classic two-way valve. We are not talking about PICV. So if we take a system with available pressure drop from the pipe, from the valves, accessories, and from the coil. You can see here the coil is having 35 kPa, 5 kPa on the pipes, uh, on the strainer and shutoff valve, and then another 30 kPa as a resistance from the pipes. So we need the valve to be able to control against 70 kPa. Without a DPCV, 70 kPa will be there, and you need to select the valve to have a pressure drop of 70 kPa. So if your valve is uh, if if your valve is at 70 kPa, then your authority is 0.5 according to this calculation. Now, if I go to the selection of the valve itself and apply this. Okay. We will be having, using the same formula of KV equal flow divided by square root of delta P, we will be having 
uh, a KB value of 29.7. To select a valve covering the 29.7 KVS, we need to use a DN65 in this example, which has 40 KVS because the one which is smaller is 25 KVS, which is not covered by this KB value. Now, if we calculate the actual pressure drop after we select the valve, we are having, instead of 0 0.7 bar or 70 kPa, we are having 40 kPa because the valve became bigger. The kV of the valve is bigger. Then if the kV of the valve is bigger, then the pressure drop is lower. And the authority is 0.28. Why? Because we need to consider the actual pressure drop across that valve divided by the system pressure drop, which is 140 and did not change. In that case, your authority is 0.28. Now, what I'm saying, if we go back quickly here, and on this DPCV, which is here, we we will be setting, <clears throat> we will limit the differential pressure to, say, 10 kPa. Then the formula here will become, again, the system pressure drop, instead of 70, it will become 10. Then 70 plus 10, will be 80, and then 40 divided by 80, your authority is 0 0.5 according to your original design. So, DPCV will improve a normal two-way valve authority back to its design value, and will never make it 100%. It will make it better than what it is, which means you selected your two-way valve at all the location to have an authority of 0 0.5, but in real life, this will never happen because available pressure is not the same when you are starting from the pump till the index point. Putting a DPCV will equalize the system differential pressure at every branch. Plus, even So now we explained about uh, Anis, I believe we are uh, losing uh, losing the the sound. Uh, can you please uh, repeat the last uh, slide again? Which one? The last slide. This slide. Yes, please because we are losing yeah, the was, sound. Yeah, I think I got some trouble in connection. I don't know. Uh, it was asking for the VPN connection, no problem. So this slide about the DPCV usage on a, cont on a control valve selection, right? Mina? Yes, and yes, correct. Yes, yes, yes. So uh, let's, let's take it this way. Usually without without the differential pressure controller here, you need to select a control valve, a two-way control valve, to achieve an authority of 0.5. Considering a pressure drop across the system, a pressure drop across the cooling coil of 35 kPa and a 5 kPa on the strainer, for instance, and then another 30 kPa on the pipes, you will need the valve to be selected at 70 kPa to achieve 0 0.5 authority. Now, if we size this valve, knowing that we have a flow of 25 cubic meter per hour, you will need a valve with a kV of 29.7 to match that selection because you selected your valve at 0 0.7 bar. The closest value to 29.7 is 40. And this is your valve. Now, if you calculate your actual pressure drop after you selected the valve, you will be having 40 kVS and not 29.7 exactly. So the actual pressure drop at 40 kVS is 0 0.4. So 0 0.4 is, is your pressure drop instead of 0 0.7, 
and your authority will be 0 0.28 instead of 0 0.5. This is in case of no DPCV used. Now, if we consider the DPCV is in place here, we can change this available system pressure from 70, we can bring it down to 10. So making this, considering the same valve which we have selected, which is here 40 kVA, 0 0.4 bar, etc. If we change from 70 to 10, the total of the pressure that will be affecting the valve instead of 140 will become 80. And 40 divided by 80 will give you 0 0.5 instead of 0 0.28. So if we take any two-way valve selection, the authority of the valve, which most of the specification will call with will call for 0 0.5, is actually never 0 0.5 except in the index unit. The last unit available system pressure is less, then the authority of the valve is better. That's why you can find that a fresh air handling unit, air handling unit, etc., are uh, having a good control ability versus the FCUs, etc. But using a DPCV, you will equalize the available system pressure everywhere in your network. This is one scenario. Another scenario which is really uh, useful here, some in some of the cases, even when PICVs, pressure independent valence and control valves are used, which if, if uh, there should be a limitation on the maximum differential pressure. In our case, Danfoss valve, we have we have a six bar maximum differential pressure in our ABQM model. We have 10 bar in different model, 12 bar in different model, and so on. But in other manufacturers, their valve cannot take more than four bar, it cannot take more than 3.5 bar. In projects like in the Middle East, most of the pump heads will come more than four bar. In that case, DPCV can be useful. Example, if by mistake, in a project which we have seen this also, the valves are selected and cannot maintain and cannot sustain, I cannot take the system differential pressure or the pump head. Instead of going and replacing the whole valve PICVs, every PICV should be replaced with one which can take higher differential pressure. You can just go to the first three floor, four floors close to the pump, put the DPCV, reduce the effect of the system pressure, then all the PICV will be working perfectly because you are limiting these values from available 4 point something to 1.5, for instance. Okay, so this is the usage of a DPCV in case of a classic system or even a PICV. Now, if you move to sizing and selection. Here, we have the flow the data that you need to select a DPCV, you need the flow, you need the differential pressure set point, and then the remaining can be calculated because usually this is given by the design. So the minimum differential pressure is here. This is the available system pressure. Whatever the pump is pumping is equal to pressure on the DPCV plus pressure on the motorized control valve in case used plus pressure on the differential uh, on the heat exchanger. So in our case, when, when we, uh, we were asked to select a DPCV, there are two ways, like the, the detailed way and the simple way. The simple way, they will tell you, okay, select DPCV according to the pipe size. And that's it. Then it is an easy, easy task. Plus they will tell you also, give us a setting range of from two, based on the location of the DPCV. This is the normal way, but the real way or the optimum way to do it, like in below example, which you have done for one of the shopping malls, you will be having the drawings. And then from the point where the DPCV will be used, which is this point, you need to calculate the head losses, pressure drop until the last point, and then back to this point. Whatever you will be having as a pressure drops from entering the shop, Till the last unit is the set point on the DPCV. And this is how in some of the tenants area, it is already there. Some tenants areas are not there. If you have a tenants area, then some assumption could be done that there will be 
two, three FCUs, the pipe length will be so and so. I will show an example later on. But this is taken from an actual project, which we have done the DPCV selection. It's a shop shopping mall here in uh, the Dubai Hills, as, as I remember. So the calculation will look like this. This is the DP calculation that we are doing in our design support center, and which is also equivalent to the available differential pressure at the entrance or at the branch. This is calculated individually for each DPCV, because as it like it might look like it is simple, but DPCV is really a challenge. How to which which DPCV model or which DPCV criteria to use? What is the max DP? What is the flow? What is what? Is, because every parameter might change. Let's say if you reduce the DPCV, then you will have higher pressure drop. Higher pressure drop means you will be affecting the set point also. So in our case, after we did this single line calculation, we came to a total differential pressure required to the shop of 96.2. That will be the actual set point on the DPCV spring. In another example, which I will be showing here, we need to know what DPCV we want to use in this scenario. Knowing that we have a flow of 2.2 .2 cubic meter per hour, minimum differential pressure available from the system is 0 0.7, differential pressure on DPCV uh, on the motorized control valve is 0 0.3, and then 0 0.1 because this is a bypass. Bypass with a check valve, 0 0.1 pressure drop only. So the delta P across the DPCV will be delta P available, which is the total, minus delta P on the motorized control valve. You will have 0 0.7 minus 0 0.3. 0 0.4 bar is your differential pressure across the DPCV. So Using that differential pressure across the DPCV, dividing it by, because you know, across any valve, flow equal kV square root of delta P. You have your delta P and you have your flow. The flow is 2.2 .2 divided by square root of 0 0.4. Your kV will be 3.5 meter cube per hour. And the, the solution or the valve to be used here is a DN15 with the four kV value and the pressure setting range 0 0.15 to 1.5 because it is covering the 0 0.4 that we need to set. So that is the simple calculation. Now, if you if you tell me that I still have room, I can go DN20 or I can go DN25. This is from where you start changing the size of the DPCV and see which one is suitable for your application, considering the difference between the pipe size and the valve size. Not to be more than two, uh, not to not to be more than one size less or more. Setting of the DPCV is also uh, another, I would say, tricky part. But if you follow the instruction and uh, manual, it is something easy. So it's, it is not like, as it looks like, there is no dial. There is number of turns, yes. You can fully tie it, fully untie it to see what is the number of, of turns, but there is no indication like one turn is something, no. In the small size, which is the AVP model, one turn will show you like a logarithmic dashes at the side, which as you can see here, this hand here is the dial scale dial on the small size up to the end 50 and there will be dash like two lines is equivalent to three lines is equivalent to and so on every position is equivalent to something and this value is mentioned in the data sheet now if you consider the big one it's number of turns on the spring and it is showing that clockwise will increase the setting anti-clockwise will reduce the setting and so on so what you need in order to have a proper commissioning of a DPCV, I would say, the test port everywhere, like before and after DPCV on the, sub, on the return line, and then on the supply line, before and after the impulse tube connection. 
this is the right way to have a proper commissioning and you will not really it's not useless or it's it you will you will really need that why because as we said the setting on this dpcv is accurate leading to every turn count because i could see in some of our project a small turn 2 kpa for instance like only touch the spring so it is really accurate not to waste you can exactly set the right values so as you say set point range is showing on the plate on the dpcv set the differential pressure the desired value by turning the clock the knob clockwise or and, and anti-clockwise observe the pressure indicator one last thing which is very important is the impulse tube connector at any given time okay in some cases they are allowing we are allowing it to be at the side but what i recommend really is the tube should be connected to the pipe on the top only not from down not from everywhere only on the top in that case you will improve the control ability of the pressure in a system and most of pressure equipment will require something like this because you wanted the water pressure to be sensed properly and not gravity or movement of the system might affect the control operation of the dpcv so added value while using dpcv it's save design time no kv or authority calculation easy pump sizing because you are lib Uh, Anis, we are losing you again. During operation, guaranteed flow uh, and the Anis, pressure. Uh, can, you, can you please repeat uh, this slide because uh, we lost the broadcast for a few seconds? Okay, just a second. Let me check why we are losing the broadcast. Yeah, it's showing it's okay. Yeah, Fine. we just lost uh, this uh, added values. That's it. Ah, okay, nice. So as we said, on the added value, on the design stage, you are saving time on the design itself because you are pre uh, limiting the available differential pressure on every branch without the need of calculating them let's say you can assume a value and later on when the tenant will be connected to the network he can calculate his own uh, available pressure but at the preliminary stage you can put that value into one bar for example second no kv or authority calculation because there is no one connected yet so in your case you can just put one size less or pipe size equal valve size and then it is done the third thing is easy pump sizing because you will not consider the whole uh, different critical points you will have every branch set at a minimum value of pressure drop then you could consider instead of going to the critical point the one bar which you have set on the dpcv plus the the system pressure drop everywhere the saving and the values during construction is it saves the installation and commissioning time because there is no commissioning until the tenant is connected to the network no need to do the commissioning because it will be done later on and you are setting the dpcv to a predefined value and, and forget it whatever the tenant will do you don't have to recommission his shop because in vis-a-vis uh, -vis to your uh, pumping network you are protected by the dpcv that regardless of what the tenant is using inside your differential pressure should never exceed that one bar which you have set so easy to set which we have shown but you need test force and manometer 
and then phased handing over, which means that you can first set the DPCV at one bar, then change the setting based on the actual load requirement. Operation, guaranteed flow and differential pressure for the users. No problem from badly designed executed tenant installation because this is most of the cases. And I can name one of the cases where they use the normal two-way valve and, uh, sorry, they use the, like the mall pump head 7.2 bar. The valves used there in in a 20% of the load, the valves used have a maximum differential pressure of 350 kPa, 3.5 bar. So the moment they connect and they start their system, the valves start hammering and some of them got broken. And this is why, because if you are a tenant, you would be looking for the cheapest solution on a, on a HVAC system. Especially the valves, you'll not be looking for something which will be engineered to match the project requirement. So in that case, what we have done, we just put on the main line, one DPCV, set it at 1.5 bar, and then it was perfect. This is better than changing 100 PICVs inside the tenant area. Okay, and then if you have used area and unused area, there will never be any interaction between them because when you put a DPCV, you are splitting, you are isolating that area completely from the network. Flow verification and easy troubleshooting, this is done if you are using a DRV or the test ports across the DPCV. These are the added value for everyone, which you can see. Let's say reliable heating system or cooling system, building owner and tenant users. Improved thermal comfort is tenant users. Flexible design is for everyone. Energy efficiency is for building owner and tenant as well. Save on design and redesign time is on designer, consultant and tenant user. Fast project handing over is on installer and building owner. Save installation time is an added value to the uh, building owner and the installer as well. Commissioning and recommissioning time is on user installer and building owner and less complaint is for everyone. So this is an example on the added value and who it is affecting, directly affecting on the, on the money side of the thing. So the results, better comfort for user, fewer complaint, save money and energy saving, flexible design and redesign of zones and shops. And that is from our side. And it is open now for the question. We are at 12.44. We have 15 minutes for the, your questions. Uh, thanks a lot, Anis, for this great presentation. Uh, we will proceed now with questions and answers. We will go uh, in sequence. Uh, first question. Do these uh, DBCV valves have a flow limiting function also? No, for the, for the DPCV valve based on the model we will be using, some of them, which I can recall ABPM, have the flow limitation. But DPCV is not really meant to have the flow limitation. DPCV is meant to limit the differential pressure, which means, let's say, the flow limitation will be done on the units later on. Now, DPCV, when you are installing DPCV on a, a branch entering to a shop, the purpose is to limit the differential pressure and not to limit the maximum flow. But limit, because you have flow and differential pressure. Both are in relation with each other. If you fix one, you fix the other. The valve, same KV, if you fix the dip differential pressure, you limit the flow. So it is done based on the pressure. If you want a flow limiter directly, then it's an auto flow valve. This is a single line valve and not a valve which will be controlling between supply and return. So yes, in our model ABPM, for instance, you can limit the flow and the differential pressure. In all other models, which are our D other DPCVs, you can limit the differential pressure and the tenant should limit his flow. 
Okay, great. Uh, differential pressure to, uh, 10 to 16 bar is too much for the current chilled water pumping system. Normally, it is in the range of 5 to 6 bar only. Yes, so uh, this is because of, I mean, it's something we call as a benefit. And when I mention 10 to 16 bar, I'm mentioning the maximum, the upper limit, and not because you can even find uh, the PCVs with 2.5 bar. This is not why I'm saying if your DPCV maximum differential nominal maximum pressure 1625 maximum pressure drop, which means what is the maximum differential pressure that the PCV can take, and this is the available pump head. Usually, uh, we, our valve can take up to 10 bar, up to 16 bar, but it will not make this much of resistance in the system. If this DPCV can take up to 10 bar, when you measure across it, you will find 30 kPa, 0 0.3 bar. But if you bring a pump with the head of 10 bar, still this DPCV will be able to work. That's why I was mentioning about heavy industrial design for longer lifetime and uh, li uh, reliability. This DPCV can live the whole uh, lifetime of the building itself. So this is the maximum limit and not uh, a resistance because otherwise, if you go and see most of the compact DPCV, in the market, the maximum differential pressure will be maximum like 1.5 to 2, 2 bar, but this is less than the pump head. And I tested this in one of the projects. When you fix the impulse tube from the supply line to the valve, it's immediately closing. Why? Because the maximum differential pressure has exceeded the value on the DPCV. We don't want to be in that position because there is no solution unless you remove the impulse tube and you are not using the DPCV at all. So this is very important to have maximum, higher maximum differential pressure in order to match all the application you might face in the project. Okay, Clear? Thank you. Clear, yeah. yeah. And instead of partner valve, can we use test plug in the pipe to connect the impulse yes. tube or it's mandatory to use partner valve? No, what usually the usually the partner valve is something specified by the consultant or the designer. They will tell it's for commissioning purpose. Put a partner valve so we use it during the uh, flow setting stage. Then we can set this valve and measure the flow across it. So if it is there, we are using it. If it is not, it's okay as well. It will not, using a partner valve or not using a partner valve will not affect the operation and the functionality of the DPCV. The DPCV will work as designed, either directly connected to the pipe or connected to the partner valve. Nothing will change as a functionality. What will change is the flow verification on that partner valve supply line you can change you can verify the flow but only at 100 percent flow condition and not at uh wh while the dpcv is working and controlling versus the system differential pressure so yes to my understand dpcv is highly recommended in the case of utilizing two-way control valve but in case of utilizing bicv what will be the added value of dpcv exactly in case of using PICV, it's if the PICV maximum differential pressure is equal or higher than the pump head, then you don't need a DPCV. But if it is less than a DPCV might help the PICV to work properly and not to break because if the, I saw in a couple of projects here, when the high differential pressure from the system is higher than the maximum capacity of the PICV, the valve will start hammering and sometimes the spindle will be start leaking. So this is why, because the dynamic pressure has exceeded the limit of a PICV. But if you are telling to me, because here when we, we presented this DPCV, we present for Shell and Core shopping malls. 
if you tell me that the tenant guaranteed 100% will be using a PICV matching your system requirement as pump head and flow, then fine. That is for sure okay. But till today, this is not happening. The tenant is a tenant. He will bring the cheapest and something that you as a consultant will not be the one who approving it because this tenant will be paying you money so he will be free to do whatever inside it is on his own area so there is no restrictions so who told you that he will be using picv or he will be using two-way or three-way and some of the projects i saw they are using two-way and then a three-way on a couple of the units so they will you it's not guaranteed and once you hand over the project you as consultant or installer you will leave the site and then who will be responsible for this is operating operation team and the the, the owner uh, operation team which they will not know about what is the criteria you have put as an installer or uh, a consultant to match the system requirement for that reason only this dpcv start to be used in the in the shopping malls and shell and core projects that's the only reason but if again i'm saying if you are making sure that the picv is used in this project with the from the tenant side is matching your pump head your system overall requirement then yes the pcv will not have a big use on that but since this is not the case it is still used till now okay okay, okay. Uh, in case of installing the pcv at the beginning if the chilled water riser serving a multi stories a multi riser building it will be sufficient for riser balancing at both modes full load and part load or uh, is it gonna be better than using drv for sure using the pcv will be better on every aspect for balancing for uh, commissioning everything because DRV, you are doing the proportional balancing. You need to visit every single part, branch, sub-branch on the DRV to have the total balancing. Now, on DPCV, if you have DPCV on every branch, so what you will be doing first as a starting of test and commissioning, you just set these DPCVs to one bar. And then that's it. It's done. Like everywhere, you know that every single branch will have a maximum of one bar differential pressure. This one bar differential pressure later on, when the system starts running, you can change that. Some of the branch will need more, some of the branch will need less. But as a pump optimization and system balance, everywhere is balanced before even doing any commissioning work. So yes, it is better to use a DPCV in that case. Okay. Uh, we have one comment here. Uh, in this calculation, the total pressure won't remain 140 kilopascal as shown. So 0.28 beta is mistaken. Can we check this slide? Which one? Uh, the beta slide, uh, beta calculation slide. Ah, the uh, <clears throat> the alpha, <clears throat> the authority. Yes. This one. Yes. So what is with this slide? Here, here. Let me let me explain this way. Here, first yeah. we size the, the valve at 70 kPa. Okay. okay. Why we size the valve at 70 kPa? Because we have 35 kPa from the coil, 5 kPa from the uh, pipe fittings and then 30 kPa from resistance from the other side, which is the pipe, the valve, etc. So 35 plus 5, 40 plus 30 is 70. Okay, so 70 is there. When, when we used 70 to calculate the pressure drop and then came back to the valve sizing and we came back to that the actual pressure drop across the valve, instead of 70, will become 40, agree? Then, I think, yeah, I, I, I mean to say that uh, 70 divided by 70 here, plus 30 plus 5 plus 35 equal to 0 0.5.
but here what what should be considered is which it was not here the pump delta p that you are having here is 140 kPa so when this is selected and changed this is a fixed at 140 kPa and that same 140 was used to calculate the authority here so even when the pressure drop of the valve reduced from 0 0.7 to 0 0.4 the pump is already sized for that 70 kPa and be, and remained 140 and didn't ramp down so in that, well, that's why we kept it to 140 but even if you change 40 divided by 40 plus 70 which is 40 divided by 110 this will be your uh, like 0 0.3 something as a authority for this unit only let's only consider the farthest one but if you are talking about the unit which is coming directly in front of the pump it will be even higher 140 and this one will be 0 0.2 authority here will be 0 0.1 here it will be 0 0.2 here it will be 0 0.3 so that is why we kept the 140 because as you can see here the pump is delivering that 140 which was originally sized based on these calculations so in, i'm talking about this example only i had clear? clear now yeah yeah clear okay uh, in middle east application can we use danfoss heat selector to select the danfoss valves yes i mean yeah it's uh, because the valves are using for heating and cooling so there is no uh, restrictions on uh, heat selector means because of danfoss heating and not because of heating and cooling application yes you can the, the 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 answer is yes you can use the heat selector but we recommend that to go through danfoss uh, through danfoss engineer through danfoss sales office and technical support so that we give you uh, not the selection because easy it's something is to select a valve but it is but it's something not easy to select a solution so when it goes through us we can also decide or recommend which better solution can be used in that case so yes you can use heat selector but better to go through us so that we confirm your selection or your solution we can help in that so they can install the app and in case they have further questions they can reach to us right yeah 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 okay please you can install the app and if there is any further clarifications we will be there to help you out yeah yes uh, okay a little bit uh, long question uh, i have a wide infra site ets supplying several buildings dbcv has been installed on each building return riser with its companion valve at the supply to protect the control valve from high operating pressure we also have BICV for each equipment inside the building. Uh, the question is where to perform the DBT sensor for the chilled water bump VFD before the DBCV or most remote BICV. Okay, so if if you uh, you're, if you are talking about uh, DBCV is installed for every building, and inside these buildings there is. PICVs as well. So the set point on the DPCV will be the total head losses on whatever after that DPCV. Let's say in your DPCV, you are setting 1.1 bar to serve up to the index point inside that building. So your differential pressure transmitter, you can put it before the DPCV and set it to the same value of the DPCV just before it and set to the same value if you want to put it inside it will not be able because you are isolating that building with the dpcv so the information going back to the vfd of your main pumping system is not the real one because when there is an excess of flow dpcv will resist and it will create a higher differential pressure that information should give to the pump the order to ramp down but if your sensor is inside the controlled loop of the dpcv the dpcv will take the excess of pressure and you will not be able to transmit it internally okay so if let's say inside the building you have part load condition 
okay? And the DP sensor is there, you will ramp down the pump. But who told you that in other buildings, there is no part load condition? So if you are using a differential pressure controller, DP sensor should be before if you have multiple buildings. If you have, after the differential pressure controller, a separate pumping loop, which is the case here, uh, can, I can show you this example. So this is a, a, an a, a isolated area. Here you can see there is a plate heat exchange, DPCV is here. So anything after, you have your a separated pumping loop. If you have this case, then yes, DP sensor controlling this pump should be inside the building. But in case of application like this, which is a direct connection, as you can see here, you have only bypass, which is with non-return valve, and this is the flow direction, not the pump, okay? In that case, then the, your DPT will be here because this is opening and closing based on the system pressure fluctuation on this side, not based on what is happening inside the circuit. What is happening inside the circuit is limited to your set point. Whatever happens here is limited to the maximum what that you have set on the DPCV. So, but what will be here specifically on this part is the va variable differential pressure if the system is at full load this will be nearly closing then it is part loaded will start open and so on these value that give the real indication to your pump operation so yes put it before in case of uh, direct uh, cooling and in case of indirect using plate exchanger then it will be after for sure clear Yes, clear, Anis. Uh, is it advisable to select the, the DBCV based on the pipe size? It's not, I would not say is it, it is advisable or not, but I would say it's up to you because it, it doesn't matter on the DBCV to be selected on uh, pipe size or one size less. What will only change, if you change the pipe, the pressure drop across this DBCV will be, if you put it smaller, this will be higher. If you put it bigger, this will be lower and so on. But functionality wise, it will not affect. So DPCV size equal to pipe size or one size less, it's up to you. But let's say in the specs, you can tell me that the, the, the pressure drop across, the pressure drop on your DPCV at any given time should not be uh, bigger than 30 kPa. Then this restriction will make me either use same pipe size or one size less. But in my rule of thumb, usually a small size, I will not go more than 20 kPa pressure drop. In the bigger size, I can go 30 kPa pressure drop. And this will give me most of the cases that DPCV is one size lesser than the pipe size. But it is not a criteria. You can go with same pipe size, you can go with one size less, it's up to you. It will not make any difference on the functionality of the DPCV. Okay, understood. Uh, I have a very specific question here. Someone was paying too much attention. Thank you. At bare slide 24, what will happen if the flow rate to the tenant space is reduced by closing of some units? The DBCV will maintain the same set value, which will be high in this low flow situation, and flow will be more than required. Again. What will happen if the tenant? What will happen if the flow rate to the tenant space is reduced by closing of some units? Will the yeah. DBCV maintain the same set value? And in this case, yes, it will yes. be higher Look. than the. Mm. Yes. yes, let me let me put it this way: the, you, what you are fixing on the DBCV. Let's take an example. One bar is so. point on the DPCV. So this one bar, okay, is the set point inside the tenant shop. Now the tenant shop have... uh, Anis, we are losing you again. There is, there is a delay in the... We are using you again, Anis. I think there is... Uh... 
broadcast issue in Dubai today. Anis, are you there? We are sorry, there is some broadcast issues, I believe, in uh, Dubai. Because yes, in the other can regions... Hear, yeah, now can I can hear, now. hear you, Anis. Yes, I can hear you. Clear, yes. Okay, sorry for that, guys. No so, uh, again, if we have four units inside the shop, out of these four, we are closing two. And the set point on the DPCV is one bar. So that one bar was set for the four units. Now the one bar will be available for the two units. Okay, it's not like the DPCV will only resist on higher than one bar differential pressure. And it's not it will not resist on it will not react on lower than one bar. So one bar is your set point. If it is higher, it will close. When this one bar is less, it will do nothing because the spring uh, the spring is extended at the fully position that you have set. So yes, to answer his, your question is, anything extra will be closed on the system side, not on the loop side. On the loop side, it will only see one bar. Now, if your system is giving less than one bar as available, this value will be inside your tenant shop. Let's say you are setting one bar, but the system you are getting 0 0.7, 0 0.5. Inside the tenant, you will have 0 0.5. The PCV will not react to lower differential pressure. It will only react to the excess of differential pressure. Clear? Yes, clear, Anis. Uh, another question, if DBCVs are connected to the FCUs, do we need to install a DBCV on the main line as well? Uh, do we need to connect DBCV in series or parallel or both? Again, uh, okay, first question is if the DBCV is connected, connected to the FCUs, that do we need DPCV, to install you will... DBCV in the main line? Okay, if, if you are using a DBCV, it's on a on a location on single location you you don't put two dpcvs in series you will not have anything one of them only will work the other one is 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 extra in series dpcvs will not work in parallel in case you need more you have multiple pipes in parallel you can put dpcvs in parallel but operation of the dpcv will not will not work because you are sensing the pressure between a supply and return pipe so if you put the PCVs in parallel, which pressure you will be used to open and close? You cannot use a combined pressure after this uh, parallel pre system because the, the you have three DPCVs and then one supply pipe and one return pipe. So which one of the inputs tube will be connected? So to answer you, the PCVs, you should select one location not multiple. If you have already DPCVs on the sub-branches of FCUs, you don't have to use DPCV on the main branch. But if you tell me that the DPCV which we are having on the FCUs cannot take the, the pump head, then it's a different story. Then you need to change that DPCV so that it will be able to take the pump head. Not adding another DPCV on the back of that DPCV will not help you in anything. Okay, clear. Uh, if we are designing a project using DBCV, does that mean we can use two-way valve instead of PICV for the terminal units? I mean, uh, at a certain extent, yes. Because uh, using a two-way valve with a DPCV properly sized, then the two, you will achieve an authority, as I show in that example, on the two-way valve at any given time of 0.5. Authority of 0.5 on a two-way valve will at least save you 30% of the pumped water. Now, but still it will not be like installing the BICV, right? Yes, I, I, was, I was coming to that point. 30% yeah. of the pumped water is what you save in case of using a combination of a DPCV with a two-way 
for performance on control. Now, using a PICV, you will save around 50% of the pumped water compared to that solution. So that uh, 20 or 30% difference between the two solutions in pumped water is something you can calculate and you can make value engineering which way to go. Because if, if you, uh, why, why here we spoke about the PCV mainly is for again, shopping malls and shell and core projects where you don't know what the tenant will be using. But if you will be having the choice to use either DPCV plus 2A or PICV, I'm recommending 100% to go with PICV for sure. Okay, great. Another question, uh, can you please explain if a DPCV can help with a pre-installed PICV which has a low uh, delta P minimum to perform better? Uh, you mean maximum differential pressure, not minimum? Yeah, I believe minimum, you mean minimum differential pressure. You can't do anything. But if this PICV, which is already installed, having problem versus the pump head and cannot operate under high differential pressure, then installing the PCV 100% will help you. Okay. Do we need to consider the pressure drop across the partner valve while selecting KV value of DPCV? Uh, usually partner valves are DRVs and DRVs have a very high KV value. In that case, it will not exceed 8 to 10 kPa. So if you want to consider, consider what it should, it's not a big value. But usually uh, the moment you are selecting the partner valve, immediately you can see the graph and you, you can put the uh, pressure drop across the partner valve. But yeah, it should be considered. But not in selecting the DPCV. It's for the information of the commissioning team and the pump optimization team so that they know that this is the pressure drop. So they will tell you either to make it higher or lower. It's up to them. Okay, thanks, Anis. We are done with the questions. Uh, thank, in you case you, thank you. In case you have any more questions, uh, please reach to us over the email and we will respond to your email in case of any questions or requirements related to uh, today's webinar. Uh, we will send you another uh, invitation for our next webinar, uh, which will be about the Smart Actuator Novocon Delta T Manager. It's a very important and it's the new technology now, which is used in most of the places to maintain energy efficient system. We would like you all to join us and in case we are trying to reach out to, to everyone, in case uh, you have uh, a friend or colleague uh, who you feel that uh, the uh, webinar or the presentation will be important, please you can share the registration link with them and you are all welcome. Uh, at the end, I would like to thank you all for participating and for joining us in the webinar and hope to see you in our next webinar. Thanks a lot. Thank you.